All right. So pretty much for each audience, each place you want to preach, you don't want to preach a message that is, is, is alien to them, right? You have to take your message and suit it to the crowd that you have, right? You want to be respectful of people. You don't just go there and say, oh, you must listen to the way I say it, right? Don't forget, always you are a servant. Let's not forget we are a servant. You know, when we use the word minister, I know a lot of people are abused. They have no clue what it is. They call them honorable minister, <laughs> honorable servants. They think minister is an exalted position, so they abuse it. He's honorable servant. I don't know why they're putting honorable there, because servant is servant. There's no honorable servant if they know what minister is. You are ministering to the people. You are serving them, right? It's not for them to come to your level. It's for you to go to their level and bring them up to the level they need to be, right? That's what the minister does. That's what the communicator does. You go into the mud and help to bring the people out of the mud, right? So uh, I'm on slide 11 here. It, and it says, part of the process for delivering your best sermon is discernment, right? Very important. Whether well, irrespective of what you're doing. For me, my best sermon is, is, is where I can visualize. I try to visualize what I'm going to do, right? You know, I spend time in quietness just to get my, my spirit in a place where it, it, it comes to a place of alignment with the, with the occasion, right? I'll give you an example. Uh, when Daya, when Daya once, once uh, went to, when Daya is not a Christian, well, I don't know if he's a Christian, but it's, this is from personal development world now, circles. Um, it's not necessarily a Christian, I'm not sure. It's late now. But when Daya had a place where he, he's a personal development coach and all of that, and he had a place where he was supposed to be speaking, and he forgot his notes. He forgot his notes. So he was there and he was, <laughs> he done to put all those notes together. It's like a pass of your sermon notes, you know? But he had, to, he, had, he had to come to cognizance of the fact that he is the message, not the note. And his experience that day changed him so much that he stopped using notes, right? And a lot of ministers today you would see try to avoid using notes, right? And people use different ways to get to that point, right? For T.D. Jakes is that he already has a story. He typically would have a story and all his, his message is following after the, the line of that story. So he doesn't really need a note. Same thing would be like Stephen Fortig who, who, who mirrors uh, T.D. Jakes. Um, but all the ministers I know you know, typically would do their Sunday message and prepare a Bible study outline following that. And they spend time so much with the message that it becomes a part of them. They can, you can wake them up and they can preach it, you know? But the key thing at the end of the day is that never forget, it's not about having a note, it's about becoming the message such that without a note, you can preach it. You, you, you absorb the message so much that it is you. For me today, I rarely use notes depending on uh, the, 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 the scenario, you know, and I, and, I, and, I, and I come to a place of peace that even if I don't have opportunity to have a slide or a note, that I am the message, right? So that's why I do a lot of study. That's why you'll find me always eating, eating. Because the more I eat, the more ready I am. Because every little thing I do, becomes a message that I don't know when to come. See, if I don't eat it, the Holy Spirit will have nothing to go in there and take. Don't forget his job is not to give to me, it's to remind me. He reminds me of the truth, not that he will give me the truth afresh. If I store the truth there, at the time I need it, he will go there and pick it and give it to me. But I have to eat it first of all, to be reminded of it. I cannot be reminded of something I have not taken in before, right? As we're having this session together, everything we're doing here becomes a feeder for another message. I found myself in another, seg another segment. Everything we have said here, some of which I'm saying freshly, feeds into that next message. That next message feeds into that next message. You see, I am becoming. And out of the person I'm becoming, there's a free flow. 
in communication. Any question, anything I missed anybody, question, anything? You want to add something before I go on? Elvis, are you, are you flowing along? Yes, I am. I am. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I just feel that because like, I don't want to like uh, get you know, so I'm just listening. But yes, I'm along with you completely. <laughs> All right, great, great. I mean, if, if, if there's any question, let me know. Is there any question you want to ask? Something I didn't say well, you want to correct, you want to add the perspective. You know, it's not about me preaching to you. It's about us getting something out of all of this. Is there something that? Yes, I agree. I agree. All no, right. no, no. Like, I'm having a good time. I'm listening. I'm getting ideas. Awesome. I'm getting, you know, so yes, for me, I, I think it's good. Yeah. All right. Great. 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 All right. Let's go on. All right. So it says, I mean, this is what I just finished explaining. It says your process, your preparing process must be strong enough to support the substance of your idea and supple enough to bend to the unique and distinct needs of your audience, right? So bending to your audience is not to say that you are now conforming to them. It's not that you are now going to twist the truth, right? Or you, you'll say, hey, hey, gaze, you don't want to say things that are, not the truth, no. What we're saying is that you have the message, you have the message, but you have to respect the audience you want to give the message to because your intent is not just to talk to them. Your intent is that your message will be received by them, right? Same way we just gave an example about marketing, right? You want to make someone who doesn't know he has a need buy something that he needs, right? So you have to find out about that person, find out how that person understands received messages, right? And talk to that person where that person's mind hears will be open. I'll give you an example. So when marketers go out to market, they find out about the person they are going to talk to, right? They find out, oh, does he have children? Is he married? What kind of wife is he married to? How does he spend his spare time? All of that. Because any of those things, you want to latch on those things. Because you can latch on something that the person is interested in, you will be open up to hear the other thing you want to say. Right? If, if you talk to someone and you cannot latch onto something that interests that person, anything you say will be water off the back of a crocodile. Right? So what they do is find out about you, show some interest in what you are interested in, because once they can, both of you can have the same interest, you will listen to any other thing that person wants to say. That's the way the marketers do, right? And in the same way you want to preach a message to a crowd, they must accept your person before they can listen to what you have to say. You might have the best message out from heaven. They will not listen if they cannot see a commonality with you. It's just like during, the, during racism, right? We had there at the crowd, all of these, the best musicians. The white people, once they see the black person, they don't listen. Even though he's the best of music, he's supposed to take it to heaven. Even the Christians among them, they don't listen. Once they find it's a black person, they don't listen. So what some producers were doing was just playing the music without showing the person. So they loved the music because they didn't know the person who sang it. Right? So you need to be cognizant of things like that, you know, because your intent at the end of the day is to get the message true, right? And, uh, all right, the other part in here is talking about that we can learn from other people. Like I said earlier on, it's not about um, becoming someone else, but you can learn from other people. Right, you can learn from other people that are that that are communicating, other communicators. You can learn skills from them, but it's not to then start trying to communicate like them. You need to be yourself. You can never be good at being someone else. You can only be very good at being yourself. But you can get better by learning skills. Right, that's important. 
So uh, communication is an art. You get better at it by seeing all that people being creative in their communication, way of communication. You can learn from that creativity, how to be creative yourself without losing who you are, right? I'm gonna, and I just talked about the creative process. Talk to you about we need you need to um, carry the people along, you know, and connection and being able to carry them along will make a difference between a good speech and, and one that's not. And T.D. Jakes here just gives an example of how he goes about his own process, right? He studies, he thinks through the subject, he prays over it, then he just releases himself to the spirit of the message, right? And that's important. Uh, talks about the need to begin with prayer, you know, getting yourself into a place where the Holy Spirit is able to flood your heart with what to say. Because each time you're doing, you have to do it, especially when you're in ministry, you have to do it in the power of the Holy Ghost, right? I gave an example the other day of, of me leading a prayer session, right? And I'd seen a lot of people come and lead prayer sessions. It was like, no, I'm supposed to lead prayer sessions. You know, I'm not the, <laughs> I'm not the loud person and all of that stuff, you know? Like I've said, I grew up a shy person. I'm an introvert by nature. So, and I'm trying to get people to pray. And I'm coming at the heel of what happened with all those gimme, all of those things, you know? And I just had to put myself in a place to ask, to, to ask what would the Lord have me do? How would, how would it be best to lead this people in a place of prayer? And when all of that was right, I just came in the simplicity of that. And the spirit of prayer came. See, the results is important. The spirit of prayer came. With my authenticity, God respected my authentic nature. Right? And the spirit of prayer came. The people prayed like they've never prayed before. So much so the keyboardist who saw what was happening became my friend. He came and said, wow, and you did not, and we're so simple. But the result came. Because when it comes to ministry, it's all about the Holy Ghost, right? None of us can change anybody. We're just vessels creating the, we're creating the ground for fire to fall. What you want is fire to fall. People are not going to be changed by your words. They're not going to be changed by your None of what I'm doing here is going to change you. I'm just believing that I'm, all I'm doing here is creating the ground. If I can create the ground, then the Holy Spirit can come, fire can fall, and it can begin to take anything that I've said and apply it in the specific area that you need it. Right? That is what's important. It's the specific area you need it, which might be entirely different from what I've said. Right? It's the fact that you are getting the word where you need it. That's the critical part of it all, right? And talks here also, also about visualizing, you know. Um, there's a need to be able to visualize what you want to do and uh, before you do it, and that can help you prepare also, right? And there's a need especially as a preacher, we need to give the word as the basis of what we're teaching, right? We don't want to give people just our own experience. The word of God has to be the basis of anything you're preaching. And if you're doing it in a secular place also, you need to give a foundation of things that are true, right? Irrespective of what you're doing, let the truth be the foundation of what you're sharing, right? 